What's up, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Game, your one-stop shop for everything cool in video games. I'm one of your hosts, Drew Bosley. Don't forget to head to insidethegame.ca, where there you can be a part of the show. Coming up on today's episode, Nate and I talk about New Dawn. Far Cry is back once again. We also visit Terry Crews, who is kind of in a new game as well. You may have heard of it, Crackdown 3. Check it out, see if it's any good. And Corey and Nate talk about one of the biggest games this year, Apex Legends. To get things started, here's the inside scoop. So for all those of you who missed out on the closed beta for The Division 2, the open beta launches on March 1st. So if you've been on the fence on whether you want to play this game or if you've never played Division, I highly suggest you check it out because it was a ton of fun on the closed beta. Brawlhalla, the popular platform fighting game developed by Blue Mammoth Games, has been a battleground for over 20 million players since their launch in 2015. If you haven't played this game before, I suggest checking it out. It's free to play on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. The Nintendo Direct has recently taken place and they've had some huge announcements for the upcoming year. Every game covered in this Nintendo Direct is slated for launch for Nintendo Switch this year, said Doug Bowser, Nintendo of America's Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Whether you're looking for new games in classic franchises, new content for existing hits, or completely new experiences, Nintendo Switch has something for everyone over the next several months alone. So with some really great upcoming titles, we get to look forward to Super Mario Maker 2, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Astral Chain, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Dead by Daylight, Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered, Unravel 2, and a lot more. If you're interested in checking out the full Nintendo Direct, hit up our website at insidethegame.ca. Rage 2 has released their 9 minute extended gameplay trailer. If you're interested in that, head over to our website at InsideTheGame.ca to check it out. And also, make sure you check out the game on May 14th on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Reacting to some signal close by. It's Arctic, right? Yep, it's designed to pick these old signals up. It could be an old arc. If it's untampered with, it might still have weapons and gear inside. You should really check it out. All right, Jump Master, let's head to the Thunderdome. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in the crunching drop song. Turn to a beast when I'm repping. I'm a living legend, but now I'm stepping in and get a couple weapons. All right, Corey, so we got blindsided last week with Apex Legends from Respawn Entertainment. What the heck did you think of this awesome game? Well, I mean, you kind of gave it away there with awesome, but <laughs> let me tell you, as a Battle Royale guy right now, everybody knows, if anybody's watched the show, they know I'm a Fortnite guy. I love yeah. it through and through. I'm addicted to it. I play it more than I play any other game right now. And then EA and Respawn dropped this game last week called Apex Legends. A Battle Royale game, uh, three-man squads, 60 players per match, and let me tell you, I think they figured it out because this game, right out of the gate, free to play, um, not even that big of a game to download off the bat, and they throw you into this beautiful map that you drop into, and it's just, as like I said, it caught everybody by surprise. So, A, first of all, cheap, free game, Yeah, <laughs> you're paying nothing for it, and then when you drop in, Everything that you see, the way the player models look, the way the whole entire map looks, you're like, there's no way this game is free to play. It's wild. Oh, it's it's crazy, man. I've already probably dropped close to 100 hours already. Yeah, you've been playing yeah. this game religiously <laughs> since it dropped. Yeah, it's been hard playing the other games that I got. It's true, it's true. But not really. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Apex Legends, oh, like... 
for the fact that I haven't spent a dime and I'm going to keep dropping another 100, 200, 300 hours maybe even on this game, yeah. it, it's it's ridiculous, man. It's You know what? Right now, and they like I said, they, they kind of took what Fortnite does is that you've got this free-to-play aspect, so you download this game. You're not really sure what it's all about. I mean, we've seen a lot of Battle Royale contenders outside of Fortnite that have done well but maybe not really gotten close to where Fortnite is. And let's get real here. It's going to be tough for anybody to reach that mark. Of course. But as far as I'm concerned, Apex Legends is number two in my book. It's already beaten out PUBG in my eyes. It's beaten out H1Z1, uh, Call of Duty Blackout. It's just, there's so many people playing this game right now. I think within, what, the first week, we've got 25, 25, million, 25 players. million players playing this free-to-play game right now. And let me tell you, you notice because when you hop in these lobbies, you're getting into games super fast. There's almost no downtime in between rounds. And let me tell you, these lobbies are tough. There are people playing this game right now that are <laughs> top-tier players already. The yeah, game's man. been out for a week, <laughs> man. So you it's... see some of these stats and, like, you know... 300,000 damage dealt. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah, like I've got four kills with this one character. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, speaking of characters, it starts off and you've get uh, six, yeah, six legends with two unlockable legends um, right off the bat. Yep. And um, all, each of these legends have a particular uh, ability and kind of uh, their own set of skills that make them move around the map better or be able to use elements on the map to their advantage. Yeah, so like each character has a passive ability. Yeah. So for instance, the um, lifeline, the medic, yeah. she her passive ability is when she goes to revive you, she puts up a huge shield protecting you, which comes really in handy. Oh yeah, times. because you have nowhere other than what's around you in your environment to, to hide or defend or anything to keep you safe from people looking for you, right? So it's not like Fortnite where you're building walls and a big tower to, <laughs> to hide in while you heal up. Yeah. You gotta find somewhere to hide to heal up or you know get some energy or find ammo so having an ability like that really helps out oh absolutely yeah so there are several things that apex legends has done just to kind of like just to take it that next step ahead compared to all these other battle royale games so for instance there's this whole pinging system in this yeah. game where you can ping doorways you can ping enemies you can ping grappling hooks you can ping everything in this game and it has it, it just adds such a good communication element to this game because you don't have to have a mic now you can just ping a weapon for your buddy be like hey there's a there's a sniper rifle here you should pick this up yeah you know like it that element alone really stood out in my opinion yeah it's one of those things that you know in a in a very occupied battle royale genre that we don't have in any other game, right? And like we said, Fortnite has the build that nobody else has, right? So that what makes them stand out more, you know, as far as gameplay elements go yeah. compared to the other ones. So now you've got this pinging system. Anybody that doesn't know what pinging is, it's basically yeah. you look at something on the screen and you can mark it and it'll show up on the mini map and also in real life on the map for your other players to see. So it's a way of communicating that allows you to basically, like you said, look at almost anything in this game, whether it's a doorway into a building, an attachment for a weapon on the ground, something up in the sky, you can ping it and your teammates will know about it. And that's what makes it super handy because... I you, use it, like, sorry. No, yeah, no. I use no. it all the time in this, man. Yeah. I non-stop him pinging everything. Everything, because you, it, the, it, with these games, communication is so key. So if you can let your teammates know that, you know, there's ammo that you need over here, there's an attachment for a gun that you're carrying that I'm not over here, come grab it, get body shield over here. There's so many things that you can tell them to come get or they can communicate to you and it, you don't even have to speak sometimes. And I mean, I'm in a party with two of my friends playing this game and sometimes it's almost silence until we, we get into a battle because <laughs> you're just pinging things so you want to listen to what's going on, right? Exactly. So, you know, you're running over here to grab this or this guy's going to hit this grappling hook and send up that way and like there's so many things to interact within this game and that ping system really kind of brings it all together and it's so seamless like it's not you're you're oh, pressing yes. right bumper on Xbox um, and it's like it, you're just it's happening you don't have to worry about you know going through some sort of selection wheel which they do have for the ping system you can pull up yeah. a wheel um, to pick different things where you know you might be defending this position or heading this way but the ping system allows you to just you know double click for enemies if you want to mark an enemy or just click once on an item or a, a location and it just makes it so easy yeah, right yeah absolutely yeah definitely so another thing too that kind of stands out is the revival system in this game. Yeah. Because for me, I, I'm not a pub, or sorry, I'm not a battle royale person like yourself. Yeah. But 
because I hate dying and you're at the beginning of a match. And having and a restart. And, or I'm stuck watching my buddy sit there for 20 minutes and play through a match, which is cool and all. But yeah. Like, I'd rather be able to re-engage myself. And with this game, you can do that. You can get killed two to three times. You can die as many times as you want. If your teammate <laughs> grabs your banner yep. and brings you back, they, it's it's endless it's it perfect. makes that yeah like you said it's it kind of takes that maddening aspect out of the game where if you die you know it wasn't your only shot at it right no. and if your teammates are good what they can do is pick up your banner from your fallen body and there's points on the map revive points where you can actually go and bring that banner of the player to this point and what you do is you revive them and a drop ship comes in and your player actually that guy jumps off the drop ship on that location which is super cool the ship flies in and like just the whole animation <laughs> with it all is really nice like yeah. whether you're a player on the ground or you're the guy that's in the drop ship and the nice thing is is that these um, revive points can only be used once so if you use one then you know at least somebody's not going to come and revive yeah. somebody else there as well um, but they don't make it easy because when you come back you've got nothing, nothing. you've got to reloot you got to find <laughs> guns you got to find something and usually if you're getting revived it's probably closer to the end of the match <laughs> yeah. where it's going to be a lot harder to find things because there's a lot of people running around with some good weapons out there yeah and it, that's it, it so it, they give you this but they're also not just going to give it all to you right so you, you get this ability to come back, but you've also got to scavenge now even more than you were before just yeah. to kind of get back into the fight. But again, having that extra player, because when you're shorthanded in this game, it is very noticeable. Oh, absolutely. Whether it's, you know, 3v2 or 1v3, it's uh, it can be difficult. It's a team-based game. There's only one game type. There's three-man squads. Yep. Which they did say that there's singles and doubles coming. Which is I, gonna, I think is going to really open things up oh, in this game. There will be a lot of people that are going to just hop on that. But for me, I'm glad they launched it like this because... It really kind of forced people to be like, "Hey, this is a team-based game. Yep. This is why. This is how we build the game, and we want people to play." It's it. all about working together in this game, and yes. what working together not only in communicating with the ping system via any party chat, something yeah. like that. Bring your buddy back to life after he went down. Exactly, <laughs> and and the the legends, the legends you pick for your team really come into play, right? Like. You can't pick the same legend as somebody else, which also is a really cool aspect. Very Overwatchist, yeah. You know, like you get that's the way they play that game, where you can't have multiple players of the same type. Which in this case actually makes sense because you want <laughs> you silly want with three exactly same exactly character. you want you want three <laughs> different people because their abilities allow you to kind of form these three man teams that can be advantageous later in the game or early on in the game. So it's all about finding that mix that really works. Good luck, brothers. So some people are going to put some money into it like they do with Fortnite and other games like yeah. that where you know they they're having so much fun playing this game they want to change their experience a little bit by changing up the way their character looks and stuff like that. But the nice thing is is they still give you a way to get these things without actually paying for them. There's yes. in-game uh, crafting materials they call it which is another currency they have. Um, you don't collect them that fast, but you if you save them up enough, you can actually get some of the legendary skins available for the characters and the and the skin yeah. or the gun skins, which I thought was like a really cool idea. So they don't even make you pay for the stuff. If you really want to grind it out and get it, you can and still you get it for free. Means you can. And exactly. the leveling up system is it there's no level scaling, so from I haven't gotten to level hundred, so I can't I guess <laughs> vouch for that. But like between I'm pretty sure like, you know, 10 to 20 was the same as it is from 30 to 40. Like it's, yeah. it's 18,000 experience. You get an apex pack, which is like a loot box. Yeah. Every other level, and then once you're at 30, it's every other second level. So it does take longer, but you get again, you get material every time that you can use. The yeah, when you tool. get these apex packs, yeah. yeah and they, sometimes you can unlock like you. I unlocked a legendary skin the other day in one of those, and I mean that's. 1200 crafting material and right now I think I've only I've played maybe 40 hours in this game and I've got you know like 120 crafting material yeah. so I mean you don't get this stuff very fast so the ability to get these apex packs when you level up and get the chance to get some of this loot that you may not be able to save up and get or take a long time to save up yeah. and get I thought is really cool yeah and they and they even guarantee you they show you all the numbers right there on the at the actual store, they say you have a 7% chance to get a legendary item, and after 30 Apex packs, or yeah, Apex packs, you get a guaranteed legendary. So no matter what, you always will end up getting that 
top tier loot, you know, which sometimes isn't always what you want, but no. that's like at least it guarantees you that you're going to get something, something higher, higher tier. Yeah, exactly. And actually, you know what? Uh, if you scroll through any of the legends and you go through their skins or what the weapons, some of the different weapon skins, they've done a really good job at designing some of this stuff. Like oh, it looks yeah. so cool. There are some things that I'm kind of thinking I might spend money on. I'm, get, <laughs> I'm probably going to get the battle pass. And so. you know what? Well, yeah, as soon as they drop the battle pass, I'm definitely going to be all in on that <laughs> yeah. because right now, like I said, I'm a pretty religious for Fortnite player, but this game is pulling me out of Fortnite, and I'm playing Apex, and then if I'm not doing so well, I'll hop back to Fortnite, but then when I'm not doing so well in Fortnite, I'm like, all right, let's 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 get Jumpmaster, I'm getting back into Apex. <laughs> so what happens when you got your fourth buddy and you're playing Fortnite, and then you guys hop to Apex? <laughs> well, the nice thing is some of the guys we play Fortnite with don't have Apex, oh, so we're trying to get them on it, so the, it. the transition to, from four guys to three isn't so bad, okay. but uh, I hear you that, you know what, it's... You play, there's so many games out there that are squad based and the squads tend to be four players. So I think for some people that's immediate turn off. They're like, well, it's only three players. So, you know, it's nice to have that fourth guy. But you know what? For the size of map we got, if every squad had an extra player, I don't know if it would work. I, don't think, I think it, it would. would almost feel too congested. But uh, overall, I think Apex uh, Legends is a great game. Yes. Um, EA and Respawn really dropped this one on everybody and they surprised everybody with an excellent game. It's come out, it seems finished, and their support level, as far as, you know, it's only been a week, but they're, you know, they've already teased what the battle pass is gonna look like. They've already done some quick, small patches in game already. Yep. So I think this is gonna be a game, as long as they stay vigilant with the support, then this game's gonna soar. Like yes. it's sky's limit. For, I'm thinking esports. Like there's yes. there's a lot of doors that can be opened for a game like this, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Absolutely, man. Me too. So okay, let's wrap up this review. What are you gonna score Apex Legends? <sighs> All right, I've been thinking about this one for a bit because I know this score means a lot to me, man. I'm gonna give it an 8.5. Okay, so I'm pretty. I'm actually higher. Yeah. I'm giving it a nine. It's it's obviously not a ten. It's not a perfect game. No. And it, you know maybe if they had a couple more things, it could have been the ten. But it is so close, and it is totally worth downloading. Pick up this game. Apex Legends is a great entry into the Battle Royale genre. Its unique pinging system and ability to move around the map quickly and efficiently is something that really makes it stand out from other Battle Royale games. The only thing is, is sometimes the lobby seems slightly uneven with player skill. Hey, what's up, everybody? We are back with another game on segment. We are playing Runbo. Nate recommended this one, so we're <laughs> going to check it out. This is by 13 AM Games. So we have Steve filling in for Randall, who currently sits at two points. Corey's got two points. Nate's catching up with three, yeah. and I'm holding the lead by a little bit with four. Oh. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> so let's pick our colors. Let's, let's pick our hue. Your hue. I'm going to go with, well, I'm swift. I'm blue. Ish. White. I'm green. You're green? Okay. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not. I can only go yellow or lilac. I want orange. You're orange. I'm blue. Corey's orange. I'll go pink. Shante. Is it? I don't want to be Shante. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> lilac. All right. Ready to rock. Let's ready. Let's do this. So it's the first one. Well, it goes 10 rounds, right? Yeah. All right, ten, yeah, rounds. Yeah. 10 rounds and whoever has Winner the most wins. <laughs> yeah, wins kind of thing at the end of the check. I don't remember oh. the just time. So you're, when the color fades, the platform disappears is kind of the idea here. We'll get the, oh, who just took the power up? I didn't. Whoa! Oh. Oh. We're all the same! <laughs> no, 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 I don't like that. Ow. Oh, yes, no! no. Oh, I jumped back. No! No, I, no. no. oh, I'm dead. Dang it. Who, who's the left? <laughs> We got Steve. Steve and Corey. Cor oh, there you go, Randall. You got Steve going for it. Oh! I didn't think I was going to make it there. I thought I was going to slide right into the spikes. <laughs> round one to Corey. Oh, I'm a roll. All right. That was actually a good round. Oh, 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 I was on the platform. Oh, no. Ah, darn. I died. Oh, no, don't, don't switch. Oh, I don't like oh, it. Oh, I just died. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no way, 
Okay, exactly. That, sw that switch is nasty. Man. I don't like it. Comes it. out of nowhere. <laughs> it just screws you. No, don't do that. Nope. Whoa. Oh, uh, what, okay. what? Don't. Oh, who keeps switching? Okay. Double jump. Oh, I almost had it. Well, I don't know if that line. Oh, oh no! Chicken walk. <laughs> oh, I, <see> <laughs> oh, I don't know if the punching even really helps much. Uh, I think it does. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, oh, it's this one. Oh, I don't like this one at all. Oh. I'm not this one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to get up no, there. No, I want to switch. Yeah, you guys switch. What? I'm not much better. better. Oh, much better. oh no. Hey, record. Oh. Get oh. out of my way. So it do, you don't get to choose the power when the power up activates. It's no, just oh, no. oh no, paint. No! Oh, 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 now what? you have no idea. Oh no, it's keep. Oh, hey, it's just me. <laughs> That's just been a don't fake. screw it up, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Oh no, I'm gonna. Whoa, it was like. Get the power up. I'm not going for the power up. Last time <laughs> <that> Corey died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just gonna wait this one out. I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I got one. Good job, man. I think that's tough. <laughs> that one is tough. I can never remember which chick I am. <laughs> Just play the game. <laughs> that can't be bad. Oh, I'm way behind. Can't what, is, what does that do? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. It's disappearing. Oh. Oh, I'm so close. No. Oh. Hey, uh, orange. Come what's on, your layoff, bud? There we go. Yeah! Oh, what a oh, game! man! Corey is right. Slam jam by the orange, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, what's that? Oh, that's what that is. Oh, oh so you are such a. <laughs> You're such a. <laughs> no, on TV. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. Oh man, we we're at an impasse this here. One's, <laughs> this one's tough. Oh, I who did that? Man. Oh, we're Corey. all dead now. Oh, no. I think we have ourselves our winner. I think we got it. Yeah, no one's catching up. Yeah, unless we I get five. The next. Oh. Best of 20. Best. <laughs> oh. oh, no, no, no. That's not what I want. That, oh. that saved me. Thank you. Woo. Oh. Uh, ah. This one. Come on, Drew. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, Still man. Still going. That's pretty good. Woo. No, we just can't let Drew win more than that. That's <laughs> Oh, oh, man, that's oh. dirty. You guys just... Ah! Oh, no! Ah! Whoa! Oh! 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 What happened? Oh, this is over to Corey. Woo! All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it's been a while. You kind of needed it. I needed it, man. I needed it. Didn't think it was going to be this game. No. Oh, 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 no. Man. This I'm dead. You know, there's a level of difficulty with this game. It's oh. not easy because you don't know what's strange. coming up next for the colors. Yeah. Really? I mean, yeah, they try to give you a little bit of a hint when it jumps on the screen like that. I'm yeah. not paying attention well enough. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I was cheering for you. Thanks, oh, man. it's the last round. Last one. Ah. Right, can I get one win? Victory lab, let's go! Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I wanted that boost. Corey, go away. No, 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 no! Oh, who's swapping? Oh, man, the stairs keep going. My thumb's getting sore from hammering on the A button. <laughs> <laughs> Times oh, so no! Did you get it? No. The ski! Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Oh wow! Yes. All right, really <laughs> winner we got here. We got Corey. So <laughs> as it lands, it stands right now for the standings. Randall and Steve still sit at two. <laughs> Corey and Nate tie at three, and I'm still holding my lead by one with four. <laughs> Coming for you, Drew. That's it. <laughs> getting close. All right, let's head back to the show. All right, Nate, we're bringing the fans' top six tips and tricks for Apex Legends this week. Yep.
squad down. While jumping, have the other two squad mates scouting around you. This is key so that you have a rough idea of how many other squads are landing in the same area. High loot areas are key. Depending on your playstyle, you could travel a long distance with little to sometimes no resistance, or you can drop right away onto a dropship or other close high loot areas straight into the action. Stick together. Playing as a team is the key to victory with this game. There may be times when splitting up to flank a squad is good, but 90% of the time, stick with your team. Legend choice. Selecting your legends and building the proper team is essential. Being two defenders slash attackers can work, but having a balanced team will work best. Pinging is you and your squad's best friend. Pinging enemies, care packages, doors, zip lines, and everything on the map makes communicating with or without a mic much easier. Shotgun ammo here. Round one. Beginning ring countdown. This way. Sniper stock. Standard stock here. Level two. Thanks. As Jump Master, traveling long distance is easily achieved by obtaining max speed then elevating yourself upwards. Once you slowly start to lose that speed, you then drop straight down and repeat.
All right, guys, that's your top six tips and tricks for Apex Legends. Hopefully that helps you become an Apex Champion. Taken down. More Enemy spotted. Down. Reloading. All right, Mickey. All right, Lou. All right, it's a new dawn. All right, Drew, so we got hands on with Far Cry New Dawn. What do you think of this post-apocalyptic Montana Far Cry setting. Yeah, Hope County's changed an awful lot since I've been there last. <laughs> yes. I gotta be honest. So what happened was Ubisoft actually used Far Cry 5's map, which is, it plays out so cool in New Dawn. So if, how do we do this? Yeah, basically there's been a big explosion <laughs> and it's wiped everything clean, but 17 years later, we come from the bunkers, go up top, and everything has changed. Everything is lush, but if you pull up the map in the actual game itself, everything is burnt and it's brown and it's dark. But when you go into the world and start unlocking areas, man, it looks so cool. Yes, it, they really, I, in my opinion, they nailed the setting in this. Because yes. with your typical post-apocalyptic settings, it's usually lots of browns and darks and, you know, everything is destroyed. Yeah. Whereas this, it takes place 17 years after humans, you know, hidden the bunkers. Yep. So humans haven't been destroying the Earth's surface. No, it's so had free it's time, flourished. Right? Nature has flourished. Yes. And like I really I really like that aspect of it. It was really interesting. It's bright, it's colorful, it's so alive, right? You get these rundown areas that you can see where the explosion's been through. And you know the coolest part is if you've played Far Cry five, you revisit these areas yes. from Far Cry Five and go I remember this part of the game. I was in this and I was doing this, but now look at this building. It's full of sand and it's rubbled everywhere and there's like buildings half toppled yeah. over. And it was so cool to go back and revisit these areas that have just been destroyed from the last game. Oh man, it yeah, they have nailed it with the setting in this game. They ha you could tell they've really paid attention to all these little details to really make it feel like it's been 17 years. Yeah, and we have new villains this time around too, which is always one of the staples when it comes to the Far Cry series. What's that, Mickey? <laughs> uh, that's right, Lou. So we have two twins, Mickey and Lou, and they are taking over. They own, they run the Highwaymen crew, and they basically own Hope County. Yeah, it, they're pretty cool antagonists, you know, like Far Cry yeah. seems to kind of have the same kind of sociopath, psychopath. They're always twisted in some twisted kind of Twisted people, yeah. right? And these, it was kind of cool because they took twins instead this time. Not just one person. Yeah, not just one person, they have two. And they yeah. really are twisted, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. They're dark. <laughs> yeah. All right, Nate, so we're on our way to Prosperity, and we play as Cap, one of the heroes, kind of, we survive a wreckage. And we're off to kind of build this Hope County into something and flourish. But the home base of this thing is incredible. Yes, I really like how you, you do certain things in the map and then it kind of helps upgrade yep. your home base. Yes, it's all about going out to gather ethanol. And that ethanol allows you to resources and add those resources into the home base and expand upon that. And so each section kind of thing has like an upgrade. So there's the garage you know, your workbench and all those other standard stuff kind of things, but you want to upgrade all this to have the biggest, liveliest hood there and kind of take care of all the people because you're more or less rebuilding a whole foundation yeah. and a village with inside this prosperity place. Oh, that's really cool. And with the new element of Far Cry, you always go out and you take out the outposts and then you unlock it and it's yours. Yes. This time around, yeah. they have a completely new system. 
you, we take over the outpost, but then you have the ability to then either scavenge everything and then take all the stuff that's there, or you keep it for yourself. But if you scavenge, then everybody, the highwaymen, comes back and they take over the outpost, which then allows you to go back and take over the outpost again for more ethanol. Yeah. Problem being is those highwaymen <laughs> are a little tougher this time around, and man, I cannot seem to get this one back. It's I just, can't get it. It's just a nice added element. If if you're trying to just grind a little more ethanol or whatever yeah. to upgrade your home base, you have that option to, again, re-attack that outpost. Especially some of them, you're like, this is a really easy one to do. <laughs> so I'm going to redo this one. Well, I had no problem taking out this one the first time, but then coming back the second time. It was a lot tougher. I was like, okay, I obviously need to go upgrade some of my gear to take it back because the level I was at wasn't having it. Yeah. All right, Nate, so Far Cry this year added a new element. Kind of on the light side, we're talking about the RPG system they've added this time. Oh, yes, and Far Cry's kind of always had that light RPG elements with like upgrading your weapons or yeah. your bows and stuff like that in the other games. But with this, they really, each, even the enemies have health bars now. Yeah. So like the further you are, they'll have two to three health bars, which okay. then you need to have better weapons. Mm -hmm. My outpost. So, so I really, really like that they have the ability to craft weapons, which you've again been able to do, but now you can kind of upgrade these weapons. Well, there's a different tier system, right? There's level one, two, three, and then you get into gold, and they're all color coded just like the RPG system. Gray, blue, purple, gold, right? Yeah. So you, they've added this extra element into the game. I really appreciate they didn't go too heavy into it, they just kind of kept it on the light yeah. side. And I really like that light side. It kind of gives me that extra depth I want to go out to get more gear, more over here to go get these plants so I can craft this system or craft that, upgrade my home base, all that kind of good stuff that I like in an RPG, which isn't really heavily focused on that. Yeah, man, it, it's just like you said, it's just that perfect extra little feature. Not too heavy on the RPG because you don't want to change Far Cry too far from its roots. Nope. But it's just, it's just right. But another thing too is when you play co-op, your XP does continue to carry over if I'm playing on your world. Yes, I thought that was cool. So you and I hooked up, we played co-op. I was unlocking stuff and I was getting perks. And then when you get your perks, you can then, sorry, I unlocked some challenges and then you get these little stars, which then allows you to unlock the perks. Yes. Right? So as I'm unlocking my challenges, you're getting the perks. Yeah, it was, was pretty cool. sweet. They actually had co-op specific challenges. Yes. So that was pretty nice. And yep. although your, your map, um, when you unlock stuff on the map, it doesn't continue over, but yeah. with this kind of game, on, on the other hand, like, I hopped in right away, though. I don't even, like, I just unlocked Prosperity, and then we hopped in together, and yeah. you were well, like, had, um, like, a third of the map uncovered. Yeah, I was right? well in by the time that you joined in, right? So, so they, it was just nice that they didn't make me have to play more. Yep. It was just, like, hop right in, and I'd slowly upgrade your character. And so the co-op was so good. It was a it was ton of fun. Easy to get into. It's so simple. It wasn't complex at all. It was a nice system. I just asked if you want to come, come in. You join next thing you know, you're there. And then we go over. We did a whole bunch of things. It was very it seamless. Was, it, was, it was seamless, but it was chaos. And that's <laughs> probably one of the best things about Far Cry is you're heading off to go to point A. You may not even make it to point A because you're yeah. veering off over this side quest or that shows up or all of a sudden you get attacked by Wolverine or a bear comes out of nowhere. <laughs> right? Like, oh, yeah. We finished one mission and all of a sudden this bear shows up. I was like, what's going on? And then you were down and it was, it was such a blast to play co-op. Yeah. If you can play the entire game co-op, I absolutely recommend doing that. So another great new feature that Far Cry New Dawn has brought to us is the expeditions that they've introduced. They're really cool too, because you start at Hope County and you take your expeditions from the helicopter and they take you off the map and to a whole separate level and it's there, you're over there and you're off to steal something and you gotta wait for your helicopter to come back. But there is so many highwaymen there, that it's just chaos. But my one of the problems with this is there is not the ability I found in other Far Cries where I can go in and stealth everything. The mm. minute I just kill one person, and even if he's not seen, it just, everything goes to hell. Oh, that's kind of annoying. So I found that was a bit of a problem because I'm a big stealth player. So if that's I how I off, play my Far Cry games well, 90% of the time. Pick off everybody without getting spotted. I did it once and that was almost impossible. <laughs> but the minute anything goes wrong, it is nuts. I was off this ship, I was into the water, I was running away, I'm getting bit by sharks. <laughs> I'm trying to heal myself in the water, and I got three sharks starting to circle oh, around. Man. Then my helicopter's dropping on, I'm like, there it is. I'm just trying to get over there. And then there is <laughs> like three of these high women coming around because the alarm's going off. It is nuts. <laughs> it, but it's so much but it's a fun, fun. Fun addition to the game. 
big problem though, the AI yeah. is so <laughs> bad at times. So unfortunately, like Far Cry 5, the AI, like you said, is very um, dumb. <laughs> well, they're brainless. I, like, I just, <laughs> yes. I don't get it. They carried, I, honestly, I wonder if they've taken Far Cry 5's AI and just shifted them over to New they Dawn did. and put new skins on them. Because that kind of shows, because these guys, I shot a guy in the head and he didn't even move, he just stood there. Actually, he, he went like this. <laughs> so then I shot him again. And then down he went. I was like, come on, really? It's like nothing, no alarm, no enough. Like my gun wasn't upgraded enough to completely finish him off. He had a helmet on. <laughs> Still, one shot to the head and the guy just like, it was like a bee sting or something. Like a mosquito was flying around him. I'm like, come on, just yeah. do something. The AI, they, they do need to improve on the AI, which hopefully comes with the next Far Cry game. But maybe. maybe exactly. But yeah. it doesn't take away from the overall experience of this game because the stealthing around the AI is still really fun to take down, which the takedowns in this game are fantastic. Oh. Probably one of my most satisfying things is sneaking up and shoving a knife in someone's <laughs> eye. <laughs> yeah. And come up from behind or jumping off buildings. Too. Oh yeah. I jumped like, off a three story building and went right through this guy. It was so satisfying. <laughs> All right, one of the highlights of the game yes. for sure. A lot of positive things absolutely coming out of this <laughs> yes. one. This is a great addition to the Far Cry series. What do you score this one? It's going to get an 8.5, man. This game is so much fun and is sold at a fantastic price. Yeah. It, it feels like a perfect expansion to Far Cry 5. So it deserves that 8.5. If the AI were just a little bit smarter, it, you know, it could be that next level even close to 10. Yeah, it's so close, but the AI really kind of struggles for me. I'm right there with you. 8.5. New Dawn creates a new world in an old familiar place using the same map from Far Cry 5 in a beautifully realized disaster. An entrenching story of survival with a mix of RPG light mechanics and an upgradable prosperity is addicting. But yes, the AI are still dumb. All right, Nate, not too long ago, we played a game on segment called Schwip. This was by Jamhammer Games. We had an absolute blast playing this. Those guys hooked us up with a few codes to give away. How are we doing that? All you gotta do is like our Facebook page, share this video, and then at the end of the month, you will find out if you got the codes. Cool. We're gonna play Schwip Ball. All right, so the idea is to get this little ball in everybody else's net except for yours, and the minute you touch it, it switches the ball color. Get out of, oh, why is everybody around Yay! mine? Oh, so Randall just scored. Get yeah, in. I did. Oh, yes, holy crap, you. really? For all of us, thank you. Oh, oh line them up. no. Line them up. No. Yeah. Everybody on here, get out of here. Go, get in, go, yeah. Go, go, go. go. All right, guys, the division is coming back. We just jumped into the division we two beta over the weekend. Coffee. How are you feeling about that? We expected coffee in the morning. We expected free Wi-Fi. When those were taken from us, we survived. I need more days in the weekend. <laughs> yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday didn't seem like enough to really get into this game. And I mean, when I say really get into it, it's because I wanted to play more. Yeah. It was really fun hopping in. We're in a new setting this time around. We're in Washington, D.C. And the first thing I noticed was how much brighter D.C. was than New York in the winter. Yes. And yeah. for me, that's right off the bat. I was like, wow, I really like the look of this game. Yeah, it really is a pretty game. They Visually and the audio in this game, they have smashed it, man. There's an ambience of the sounding around you, right? Your whole surround, you can hear birds chirping over here, and then all of a sudden there's gunplay going on. <laughs> it's, just a, it's everywhere. Yeah. So to get that experience, and like you say, the graphical effect on it, it's so stunning. Yeah. There is junk. Everywhere though. Oh, the city is <laughs> trashed. <laughs> it's it's so cool. There's so much to look at and take oh. in when you're even when you're just walking from point A to point B, whether it's you know you're doing a mission or you're just traveling around the city taking a look. Yeah. And I did a lot of that over the three days. It's kind of just like search around the areas we had unlocked at the time just to see kind of how this game looks. Because I mean we're in beta stage now, so you kind of expect to maybe see some sort of issues, but to be totally honest. This game felt and played pretty good. Yeah. It was smooth. I liked right? it. I really right. enjoyed it. We get old code mm -hmm. of the game, right? This isn't obviously the finished game at all. We're no. still, what, a month out? Yeah. Right? So there's still going to be a ton of fixes, ton of bug fixes, 
maybe graphical fixes. I really don't know what they're gonna do graphically because it was so stunning. Yeah. Everything ran smooth, the menus, everything in and out of the game. Steve and I played at one point. It was a little confusing to get in yeah. with Steve, but getting past that, once he was in, man, we were gone for hours. I feel like that's just because it's the beta. Because <clears throat> Division 1, there weren't really any connection problems. Like, it was really easy to get with your friends. So was it? I do feel like that, that might just might be a beta thing, sure. right? So yeah. I hope so. <laughs> How's gunplay feel for you guys? Uh, as somebody that played just a little bit of the first division game, um, I thought back then it felt like you were, it was a little marshmallowy, you know, so you're, you're, you're putting a lot of bullets into your targets depending, you know, if it's one of the elites, it's tough to take them down, you, depending on what weapons you have, yeah. but it's what you come to know with a game like this because there's, there's RPG elements when it comes to the weapons you're getting, how you're upgrading them, how you upgrade the equipment you're currently carrying, whether it's armor, stuff like that. Yep. Um, so I enjoy that RPG aspect to these games where you know you're you're kind of always upgrading the entire time as you go but as you do these missions and you're getting you know we're getting into the level four level five stuff when you first start well you're getting level four level five enemies and let me tell you on your own this is tough yeah. some of these guys can or some of the the gunplay battles you get into can be really difficult because some of the uh, the NPCs are very aggressive they'll come running right at you the Gun, guns are blazing <laughs> yeah. they got night sticks yeah no it's there was a lot to take in but overall just the feel of how the guns shoot fire how you move around the map while you're in these battles I thought it was really clean seamless I like the targeting being able to get on there and you really notice the difference in your weapons yes. as you upgrade yes. like I went from an M16 to an AK-47 let me tell you that AK's got a little more power but holy cow I was all over the place <laughs> good luck yeah. controlling it yeah exactly <laughs> and that and that kind of stuff is it's those small things that really make really engage you in these battles uh, that's what I that's what I always like about RPGs you know you start off with the worst of the world <laughs> Oh, yeah. what and your great, gun's like, <laughs> what a great idea! <laughs> <laughs> but then you know, but then you get that satisfaction of just spending hours of grinding for that gear, and then you get these guns that don't budge while you're shooting. It's yeah, it really it does pay off. I did get that feel of oh, I can't wait to sink hours, hours? <laughs> to then get to that point where yeah. my gun isn't all over the place, and I'm actually killing the guys instead of unloading a clip and a half into the gun. Yeah, right. I'm looking forward to reaching that point. It felt smooth. The gunplay was. I feel a spot on because, as I said, you said it's an upgrade system, right? And then you get into all that upgrading, all your loot that you're dropping from a guy who didn't play a lot of Division One because I came so late to it yeah. that everybody else was on other stuff because, like you said, they had issues at the beginning, right? They just it came dry to a point. Yeah, they lost quite a bit of that fan base. Yeah, off the hop. and then I jump in and I've got all my buddies are on to something else. So I was like, okay, so we jump in here. Steve and I are on there. We're doing all kinds of things. It was awesome. And then, like I said, you get in that menu of look at all this loot. What do I do with it? Because I really didn't have a clue what I was I doing with no all this I had no idea stuff. what I was I, doing with I all I really it. can't wait to upgrade the White House. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the home base, or the home of operations, they call it, in this, yeah. is the White House, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Yep. It's a nice little take on the game. Absolutely. I just it's love how setting. accurate they've done the cityscape and layout. Like, you're seeing things that you would see in D.C. if you walk the streets. And I know they did that, and that was a big thing for them in the first game. I just like how they've brought that element in, and it's just like... You walk around these places, and it is exactly as if you were pretty much walking yeah, around in really, D.C. You could tell they really took attention to detail with yeah. this. And, I mean, they, it takes time for these games to be released, but yeah. Ubisoft has this thing with the division with the first one the game came out and it felt polished like i said yep. there, again there was some content issues off, off right off the Just bat late gameplay exactly yeah. and now We're we've got that, yeah now we've right. got we just got through division 2 beta now the the closed beta the open beta is actually next weekend yep. um so it'll be interesting to see if there's any changes from that now going to the open beta where there's going to be maybe the population will be a little Ooh, bit larger, right? Yeah, a lot larger. Because um, I noticed I was actually getting some queue loading times just trying to get into this beta. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's just part of the beta or maybe there was a lot of people actually trying to access it. I'm not sure. sure. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that transfers over for um, for the next beta and then into, into release. But uh, overall, I just think this game feels really good. And for the limited time we did get to play it this past weekend, I'm really looking forward to kind of getting onto the next beta and actually maybe hopping on with all of us yeah. and seeing how that goes. Yeah. Because playing solo through, I had a very difficult time completing some missions. And I don't think it's necessarily because I'm not as good at the game as I want to be, but 
like there's just so playing there game, are man. so many enemies to deal with in these games, and yep. you're sitting there, you're shooting these guys while these guys behind you are now flanking you, yeah, and you don't <laughs> know, and then out of nowhere, here comes some screaming lady with a nightstick, and I don't know who to shoot at this point. So for me, it was like it's overwhelming, but it's fun. So I'm looking forward to see where this game's gonna take us once release comes. So as you guys might know, I was a big division guy when I came out. I played yep. the game for a big solid month upon release, but the problem was was the late game. It it was lacking in that. Very much. But this, they really said that they've revamped it. They've revamped the dark zone. They have different, they actually have three different dark zone types. It's really cool. Which yeah. sounds really cool. Because I was, yeah. I love my PvP, and when you can have that PvP <laughs> and PvE kind of co mingle, it's, it could be really cool. So I'm really excited to see what Division 2's got up in store. Absolutely. We go into a whole deep discussion over our game cast at insidethegame.ca. Go over there and check it out. All right, Drew, is it too little too late? Let's head into Crackdown 3. All right, Nate, you said is it too little too late, and I'm going with it is too late for Crackdown 3. This feels, honestly, like we're five years too late on this thing. It seems that it should have been developed when they first announced the game and then drop it because we are now playing what is essentially a basic, dull, boring, unachievable, pointless game for me. Yeah, I'm I'm not as harsh on the game. I, I'm not that point, <laughs> sir. <Yeah. laughs> but honestly, like when I first played the game, I I was a little bit like in disbelief. I, I was like, this is what Crackdown 3 has been, this is what I've been waiting for all this time. Because it's, it's been nine years. Nine years since 20, Crackdown 2. Yes. 2014, we were teased at E3 with Crackdown 3. And with so many development, delish, uh, development issues yep. and people getting fired and all this other stuff, it's been, you know, it's just been a heck of a ride. <laughs> it's been a nightmare for Sumo Digital, absolutely. But unfortunately, it just, just isn't enough. Xbox is not afraid to cancel a game. They canceled Platinum's game, right? Scalebound, which... Scalebound is now gone, which looked like a great game. You know what isn't a great game? Crackdown <laughs> 3. Maybe they should have canceled that one because I would have preferred Platinum's game. This, I didn't care for Terry Crews, who was in it for about, I don't know, 30 seconds. Yes. So he's sticking around for just a cameo? So he... he Yes, I was super disappointed because I love Terry Crews. He's hilarious. Yep. And when you think of Crackdown, I'm like, oh, good. He might be able to kind of be the comical relief of this kind of weaker story. And like oh. you said, in the very beginning, he's in the cutscene, and then that's it. Aside from a few one-liners that you say while you're shooting things, that's all you that's get. That's if you man. choose his character, because now you have the ability to choose characters and not even have them in the game at all. <sighs> Which... Again, it's cool because they have the co-op feature, which, sure. it, which is great. But man, like, it's, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. The story they have like these little cutscenes where it's um, kind of like a comic book style where they just slowly pan over. I love that style. And, which that is great. It looks nice. But again, yeah. the voice acting, it's not bad, but it's not great. It's just it's bland, wonderful. boring generic voices that are just Everything talking about this game is generic, and that's my biggest problem. The game has taken so long to develop, but nothing seems like it's taken this many years or this much development process to get into this to have it be polished, be top-notch. The graphics aren't anything special. No, they're mediocre. The world's very kind of bland, Dull? in my opinion. It has its pretty moments, especially when you get some of these explosions and the sounds going. Oh, it look, it, can, it has its moments, but as a whole, it, like it's just Land. It's honestly, yeah. it's everything that we've seen in other, in other multiplayer games. There's nothing really original about this, really, unfortunately. Not really at all. That's the that's the biggest problem. There's nothing in this game that feels original. I, I've done it all before, and it's just not enough for me. This game, it, it shows that it's been in development hell for five years. Yes. And that's basically what they've shipped out. I do not understand why it's taken so long, and this is what we have as a finished product. Yeah. So a good thing about this game is the weapon unlocking system and the vehicle yeah. unlocking system. Basically, you just walk around and hijack someone from their car, <laughs> and then you unlock that vehicle for yourself. <laughs> and there's supply points, which are spawn points, all yeah. throughout the map, and that's where you then can choose your, your weapon loadout or your vehicle loadout. 
Fair. So it, it is a fun system. There's a ton of different weapons, and they sound really cool, and they look really cool, and they even have different effects. Like there's a poison effect that only works on certain enemies, or is super effective, we'll say, yeah, okay. on other enemies, right? So yep. the, these elements do bring the game, you know, make it a little bit better. All right, Nate, if we're going to wrap up Crackdown 3 from Sumo Digital, what are you scoring this one? So fortunately, it's going to get a 6 for me. It's missing just a few of those elements to be that $90 game that's worth paying for. Fortunately, I don't think it's that much. I think it's worth maybe checking out on Game Pass if you have it. That's a highlight Because it right will there. be on Game Pass. Yep. So it's getting a 6. That's fair enough. I'm a little lower. There's too many struggles, and it shows that it was in development problems one after another, and it should have launched when they announced it. I'm going with a five. That's worthy of gold. Unfortunately, too little, too late. It's just what this game represents. It has lots of fun elements with a large variety of weapons and vehicles, but it feels dated. Rocky development really shows the short and bland campaign. Being able to play co-op is a huge plus, but not being able to play regular multiplayer with your friends negatively impacts the overall experience. Station master. Yeah, then put the robotic bastards down. Please be aware, a hostile agent has been spotted in the vicinity. Station defenses are at risk. Now every game comes out, not all of them are perfect. <laughs> Nate, what do we got this week? So this week we got Big Papa Fool with uh, interesting revival tactics. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, let's check it out. Round one, beginning ring countdown. <laughs> 